scholarship and um, I keep having these dumb jobs and my, my, my parents own a hardware store in Wilton. <laughs> <laughs> Did you wear a little apron and sell mail? Yes, and I made a mess of everything, but I was very cute. The one time I want to find out about a person and I do all the talking. You want to find out about me? Mm-hmm. What is your father? He died. Oh. It was a long time ago. I saw you last night at Gino's. Oh. Who are you with? A friend. A friend, friend, or a friend? You're a very direct person. Well, you didn't answer my question. I know. I really have to go. I have a test tomorrow. Religious philosophy. Oxton's class? Yes. I'm in that class. You are? I've never seen you there. Well, I haven't been able to make it because of this job situation. Nice to know you will be there. Who's the girl? Dr. Oxton, I need religious philosophies. We're already three weeks into the course. Yeah, well, my freshman thesis, though, I... Spinoza, I know. <laughs> it's a campus phenomenon. Every year around this time, when students have sized up the quarry in the courses they didn't take, somebody arrives proclaiming that he cannot live without advanced calculus three, or the Scottish Chaucerians, or religious philosophies. Well, Dr. Oxton... I can assure you that in your case, it's Spinoza and not sex. Unfortunately, I can spot you all a mile off. But I don't feel I should deprive you of the opportunity to at least try on the outside chance you might soak up some knowledge inadvertently. All right. You're in. Thank you, sir. You won't regret it. Smith? I hope she's worth it. We have in the poet Dante Alighieri probably the greatest interpreter of the doctrine of the late Middle Ages. As we have seen, it was an age of great architecture, of great theology, and of the greatest and most profound faith. It produced St. Francis, St. Dominic, St. Bernard. The Divine Comedy, or the Commedia, as we shall refer to it, traces the progression of a soul from a state of sin to a state of ecstasy. This is accomplished through great self-denial, through penitence, and through contemplation. Now, who leads Dante on his journey? First, Virgil leads, then Beatrice, the divine Beatrice. She represents love, but not love as we might think of it. Mr. Smith, Inasmuch as you requested permission to enroll in this class only three days ago, I would hope for your fullest attention. I'm sorry. Perhaps your inattention is due to the fact that you already are familiar with the work. No, sir. Why don't you tell us about Dante's conception of love? Well, uh, I think, <clears throat> I mean, as I understand it, Dante's conception of love has always well um, been sort of my own conception of it. Indeed. Um, I don't think that I could hope to state it any better than Professor Charles Hall Grangent, who said, quote, according to Dante's doctrine, uh, love is an attribute of the gentle heart alone. There it slumbers until aroused by a worthy subject. The woman who awakens this gentle love must be a symbol of angelic nature or heavenly intelligence and devotion to her as worship. Unquote. Excellent. 
Excellent. Hmm. Uh, the fourth canto for Thursday, please. Prepare a three-page paper on some element of the symbolism. Don't make it too brilliant. I'm not up to it this week. Dismissed. You were wonderful. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Love is kind of a favorite of mine, you know. I lucked out. Is that really your idea of love? Yeah, I think so. Say, I'm real sorry that I lied to you about the whole classroom situation, you know, and, uh... I'm very flattered. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, in that case, are you sure you won't change your mind and have dinner with me? Oh, I can't. But I have tickets for the Philharmonic for tonight, if you want to join me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes? That's fantastic. Okay. Great. Oh, what time? Uh, seven. Ish. Hey, Al. Don't you ever knock? Nope. Which one of these do you like? I like the blue one, but then again, the blue one is nice. How about the blue one? Blue one. Do me a favor and tie this, would you? You don't know how to tie a tie? Come on, I'm real nervous. What are you nervous about? Leak. You got a hot date? <laughs> you look like you're getting married. Going to the symphony. To the symphony? Yeah, what do you think is a nice place to go eat afterwards? My room. Come on, that's a real question, David. Give me a real answer, huh? Uh, Mulligan. Take her to Mulligan. It's quiet, it's cozy, it doesn't cost a whole lot. It's very romantic. You should say, hey, let's go to Mulligan for a bite to eat. Thank you. You're welcome. It's the symphony, huh? The symphony. Bye, David. The symphony. The symphony. The symphony. the Mozart went well. You two must let us take you out for a drink. Please? Uh, thank you very much, but we already have plans. Well, another time then. Yes, of course. It's nice to see you, Caroline. Elgin? I 
you want it to go. Would you take me home, please? Don't you want to go over to Mulligan's for a bite to eat? No. I was hoping he was a relative. Well, he's not. I really don't care what he is. I really don't feel like going home tonight. Would you mind if I spend the night with you? I don't mean it the way it sounds. I just don't want to be alone. Hello again. Hello again. Hello again and again. You can walk across campus dressed like that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah? Oh, thank you. I could give you a ride. No, no, I don't mind walking. Who are you? I mean, what's your name? Caroline. Caroline Hedges. Any relationship to Sam Shrub? <laughs> Why don't you let me drive you back to your house? It's all right. But don't take it as any form of encouragement. The car, honey. 